all together. Better than birds of a feather, you and me. Change the weather. Feeling heat in December when you're around me. Oh, well, I've been dancing over cards and stumbling over bars. Following you in the dark, can't get enough. Medicine take the pain, the tattoo inside my brain. Baby, you know what's obvious. I'm a sucker for physics. Not you, not you. Sorry, female viewers out there. Uh, also, I am kind of a sucker for this guy. Because, I mean, he's one of the greatest physicists to ever be alive. How can you not be a sucker to him? Anyway, thank you, Einstein, for laying the foundation of modern physics. All right, uh, now let's send him somewhere good. Hopefully. Hopefully somewhere good. Maybe we'll send him to New Jersey. Maybe we'll send him to the bad place in Europe. It's relativistic mass. Well, to examine relativistic mass, we first have to go all the way back to Newton's first law. Do you guys remember it? I think you do. But for the people who haven't heard of it yet, which probably shouldn't be watching my videos, and the people who forgot, then, well, Newton's first law is... Oh, well, it has two parts, inertia and momentum. Inertia is when you get really fat and can't get out of bed. I mean, I mean, inertia is when an object oh, wants to stay at rest because it's been at rest for a long time. And inertia, like this, increases when mass increases, at least when low velocities. And while momentum is like the opposite, as soon as something has a high enough a mass or a high enough a velocity, it's very hard to stop it. And it can actually be the canceling factor to inertia. Here, first, let's take this equation. Now, my viewers from Italy might be saying, Mamma mia, where did this equation come from? Now, for the younger age of you from Italy, I know that they probably didn't teach this in high school. Where did the gamma come from? All you know is MV. So, well, let's just see it in action with some s simple everyday stuff. So, I'm going to be dropping a tennis ball and the rock on glass. And I want you to calculate gamma for both of them. Not to concrete, but to glass. Who knows? Who knows? <coughs> so, this is actually going to be quite scary. I'm going to be dropping this big boy on this glass. God, I think this was two meters. Oh no, three, two, one. What is the gamma factor for this tennis ball? And what is the gamma factor for this rock? In both cases, gamma is basically one. I mean, uh, if you want to go really deep, then uh, have your lots of zeros, but it's basically one for any everyday situation. You might be asking, why did the rock break the glass? Well, that was because the rock had a great mass. Its velocity was the same as the tennis ball, but it had like 10 times more mass. So, that's why it was able to break the glass, while the tennis ball was only able to bounce off of it. So, well, now you might be asking, what makes gamma so small, just static? What makes gamma so static at one? Well, what makes gamma so static at one is this equation. One over the square root, one minus v squared over c squared. Now, for most situations, velocity is nowhere near comparable to c even less comparable to c squared. So, it's usually the square root of 1 minus a very small number. So, that means we usually get something akin to 1 over the square root of 1, or just 1. That's why it's so static and 1, for people who are wondering why it can't get more for everyday situations. But now, let's say we are calculating it for a train that's about to hit you on the road, I mean, I mean, a train that's moving at 0.5, well, let's see.
Now, that may not be possible for regular trains. This is just a fantasy train. No, no. But anyway, let's say you have this train and it's moving at 0.5 C. That means that you have something, something. Because, well, now you have V squared would be 0.5 C squared or 0.25 C squared over c squared, cancel, cancel, gives us 1 over square root of 7.75. I mean, at least it's something less than 1. I mean, at least it's something, right? Right? But that's just half of c. That's already way too much for us to travel. And look how far it gets us. Almost nothing. So you can see, gamma doesn't really matter in everyday equations. That's why, for those of you in Italy, probably has been excluded from your high school curriculum. But it is still there, and it's always there. And some people have reasoned that since this is happening with relativistic momentum, which is true 100%, everybody knows this. Well, not everybody, probably the babies in my area don't know. But anyway, momentum, relativistic momentum, is very true. And some physicists even argue that there's a relativistic mass. Now, this can simplify some equations, but beware, it can lead you too far into a rabbit hole where you may get some wrong conceptions of physics. So yeah, some uh, uh, there's always a, a thorn on every rose, right? <laughs> anyway, that is, well, the concept of relativistic mass and now you might be wondering, where the frick does this come from? Well, that's what I'll be deriving in five or three minutes. Last time I did this, it was five. Five minutes, 25 to be exact. I'm going to try and do it in three minutes. So have at it. All right. Three, two, one. Start for one second. And so you have mirror and mirror. So the laser... Uh, let's say it's red while in spaceman view. What is spaceman view? Well, here is spaceman! Now, what we'll do is we'll take this man down to Earth. Which is hard considering he's stuck in a spaceship traveling at light speed. But now he's down to Earth and he's an Earthling! Earthling! Earthling alone. So, now, for the spaceman, 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 then it only has to go well up and down. That means if this is D, that means that the time it takes is 2D over C. It's like D over V. Right. So we'll call that Tina. Tina. But for Earthling, Earthling, then this changes because to Earthling, the ship is moving. And it returns back to the light source. But with a longer time, this is square root of d squared plus l squared. What is l squared? Well, l itself is v delta t, which is basically just the time it takes to return. So basically just t over 2. And so that gives us, since this happens, that gives us, well, t, not t naught, is equal to 2d, 2 square root of d squared plus l is v squared t squared over 4 and then we square both sides actually what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch these and now oh my god my arm is getting tired now what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides giving us 4 t squared uh d squared plus v squared t squared over 4 that's a lot of squared Square, square, squarey. Even more squares than earthlings. Alright. So, that gives us, well, c squared equals 4d squared over t squared. And then we'll split it on a separate function. v squared t squared over 4 times 4. That's going to be v squared t squared all divided by t squared. So cancel, cancel. That gives us c squared equals 4d squared over t squared plus v squared. That's a lot of squared. Um, Cameraman said one day he'll get a heart attack from me solving this so many times. 
so fast, so quick, so many squares to see. Uh, so many things to see, so little time to do it. And then tie right. And then tie right. So, that gives us 4D squared over C squared minus V squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out C squared, giving us 1 minus V squared over C squared. And so, now we square root everything and we get 2D over C square root of 1 minus V squared over squared so t is equal to well uh, 2d over c is t naught over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and gamma is just a shorthand so you don't have to write this painful thing and so that means that we've derived gamma which is 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and call it now i'll take this gamma copy no bring all the way over here paste 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.